Good evening guys, Mac here. So recently I did a few videos about installing Windows 10 into Parallels Desktop and into VMware Fusion. Somebody's raised the question about running Mac OS Mojave virtualized in Parallels Desktop and can you do it? Well the answer is yes, you absolutely can and it's really easy to do as well. So I thought we'd have a look at that process and see what's involved. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to get a copy of the Mojave installer. Now you may already have it on your machine so the trick is is open your finder, have a look in your applications folder and perhaps sort by size. You may find that actually the application is in there. It may not be. And if it's not, I'll show you how to, how to get it. What we're gonna do is fire up the App Store. We're gonna search for Mac OS. Oh, okay, there we go. And you can see it's there. Now, it'll say I've view because I've already downloaded it previously. But what you can do is if you hit get again, there we go, you'll see the software update running. Now bear in mind I'm already running Mojave. You may get a slightly different experience if you're running on previous versions. And it'll say, are you sure you want to download it again? So I'm gonna say download. It's about six gig, so it'll take a little while on, well, on most people's internet connection. Mine's gonna take about 45 seconds. Go. Now it's all done. Now what you'll see is the Mojave installer pop up again. We don't want to run that. So I'm going to select it and just quit out of it. Now if we pop back into Finder, into your, made that. If we pop back into Finder and have a look in applications, you should now see that install Mac OS Mojave at the top there. So that's the image we're going to use to actually install. You might want to back that up somewhere else if you want. I do that, so if you have to re-download it every single time. So we're just going to leave that there. Let's go with a finder for now. So I'm going to fire up parallels. There we go. We're in our control center. Now it's really easy to do. What we're going to do is pop to the file menu and select new. We're going to create new. Now I'm going to say install windows from another OS or a DVD or image file. Forget the fact that it says windows for now, but hit continue. Now you, you should find that it'll actually find that installer for you and it'll even tell you where it is, which is in the applications folder. If it doesn't, hit that little search button at the end or the choose manually button and go and find that installer that we've just downloaded. So when it's done, you've found the right one, hit click continue. Now you'll see that to actually build this machine, it has to create a bootable disk image. Now the disk image is pretty big. It's about 5.7 gigabytes. So I'm gonna let it do that. I'm just gonna say continue. It's gonna ask me where I wanna put it. Now I've got a, a folder with all of my virtual machines in. So you can put this wherever you like. I'm just gonna leave it in the default location. There you go, and it's done. Now it may take a little bit longer on your machine. This is a, an iMac Pro and it's got a ridiculously fast SSD in it. So here you get to choose what you want to call it. I'm just going to leave it as Mac OS. Now you'll see a couple of options down the bottom there. I'm going to select customize settings before installation, just so we can have a look at the configuration of the machine before we let it, let it launch. So we'll go there, click create, off it'll go. Now, if you see there, we've got the option to actually configure the, the virtual machine. You'll see by default, it's got two gig allocated and two CPUs. I want to up that a little bit because I want to use this machine for something specific. And what I'm going to do is pop into hardware, which is there. I'm going to up the number of cores to eight. Now on your machine, you may not have that many. So, you know, a, a reasonable place to start is the two that it recommends. But if you want to up it, perhaps try it at half the number of available cores. I'm also going to up the RAM as well. Now this machine has a ton of RAM in it. So I'm going to upgrade, up, update the memory in this virtual machine to 16 gig depending on what's in your machine, perhaps a reasonable place to start it is eight gigabytes. And the other thing I'm gonna do is look at the hard disk here. So the hard disk for my main, main Mac OS hard disk is only 64 gigabytes. So I'm gonna change that. And what I'm gonna do is click on advanced settings, click properties, and I'm gonna change that to 128 gig because I want my hard drive to be a bit bigger in this machine. There we go, and that's done. That's all I'm gonna change. All I've done is I've added more processor cores, some more memory, and made that hard disk bigger. Now, just to be clear, the default settings would have worked fine. I'm building this for something specific, so I want it a little bit larger. So what I'm gonna do now is click continue, and it's gonna shoot off and start installing the operating system for us. 
Now this is just like installing Mac OS on a normal machine, so it will take a little while to run. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to leave this running and we'll come back to it at the next point that it prompts me for something. There we go, that bit's finished, took about five minutes. So I'm going to go through the normal installation routine. This is exactly what it would look like on installing it on any other Mac. I'm going to select English UK. There we go. And what I'm going to do is select install Mac OS. Hit continue and the installation routine should start. Now, again, like I say, it should look like any other Mac. So we're just going to hit continue. It's going to ask us for the license agreement. So we're going to agree it. There we go. And it's going to ask us for the hard disk that we want. So we've only got one hard disk in the, this machine and that's the Macintosh HD. So I'm going to select that, click install. And there we go. It's now going to go off and do the main installation. Now it says it will take two minutes. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. So let's come back to it when it, it's finished this particular stage. There we go. That's done. One quick thing that you might notice that's slightly different to when you install it on a physical Mac is while it's installed in part of it, you might see this. Now that's absolutely fine. Just leave it running. When you install it on the physical hardware, that's behind a cover screen. So you don't generally see it, but, um, yeah, it's fine. If you see that, don't worry about it. Just let it run. So what we're going to do, I'm going to pop into the machine. I'm going to select my country, which for me, of course, is the UK. There we go. I'm going to select the British keyboard. I'm not going to transfer any information. I'm just going to set it up as a brand new machine. I'm also going to skip the Apple ID. Okay, accept that. So I'm going to create an account. Of course, now you can create this however you want. I'm going to use my standard admin account that I use for fresh build machines. It'll go off. It'll take a couple of minutes to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow it just to use Express Setup. You can go in and customize that if you want, of course. I'm going to go, let's go with dark mode just to see what that looks like in a VM. There we go. Okay, now there we are. There, There is our Mac OS Mojave in Parallels. There you go. Now you'll see it's, it's 10.14.1. That's because I've only just downloaded the, the installer package from the App Store. If yours is 10.14.0, you may have to run the software update to get the latest version. Now, one final thing you may want to do is if you pop up on the menu here, go to Actions and select Install Parallels Tools. You'll see a, a CD or DVD pop up on the desktop or a software uh, installer package anyway. Just click Install and we'll get the Parallels Tools installed. to run to my admin password there to allow it to install. Okay, we're all done. So let's restart this machine. We'll have a quick look at it. There we go. We can get rid of that parallels tool now. With the tools installed, you'll, you should see all your shared folders, for example. And there you go. We now have a, a Mac OS Mojave virtual machine. Anyway, like I said, it's very, very easy to do. And it's great if you want to play around with something before you uh, install something on your main machine or if you want to do something and, and see how it works. So I hope you found that useful.